Well, good day. Welcome to Stu's Shed. It's going to be an interesting day today. We're looking forward to doing this for quite a while. Now we've all seen the saw stop being set off on a uh, on a blade. Uh, we've seen how fast it goes. It's a very spectacular. Um, it's a very spectacular sa um, safety mechanism. But I've never seen it stop a dado blade. So that's what I've got for you today. Um, I must admit, I've got a, a bit of trepidation. It's a, um, it's a, it's an interesting thought trying to stop that much metal that's spinning around. Um, not only that, but um, just the idea of trying to get it off the saw afterwards is going to be interesting as well, because it's, um, you know, as much as a, a single disc of uh, steel is in a, a ten-inch blade spinning around, um, can reduce quite a thump. Um, I don't know what to know. I just don't know what to expect with the 8 inch um, with a dado set. It's going to be um, it's going to be something interesting. Now before we get started, a couple of things to go through. Firstly, and it's recommended in the box and, and it makes perfect sense, uh, the sort of dado blade that you should be using this for is one of these ones here where there's a couple of outside uh, blades. Obviously they've got a um, it's a non-alternating top bevel, uh, with one being the left, one being the right hand side, and you have chipper blades in between. And something like this one, which has got just a couple of chippers on it, is highly recommended. If you get one of these other ones, such as I have here, where the chipper blades are an entire disc, that is it's a hefty amount of steel to try and stop. Now, in saying that, the saw stop yeah, it probably could bring it up, bring it up short. Oh, sure, it will. I mean, it would, it would jam onto there and and lock on. Um, it might take a little bit longer to stop. The damage to you might be a little bit more. Um, the the main thing though is the damage to the machine trying to stop this much steel spinning is got a fair chance of doing some damage. Now, in saying that. It's a safety mechanism, and uh, when you have a, a car accident and your, your airbag goes off, uh, you're not so concerned the fact that you've just blown your steering wheel uh, apart with the airbag coming out of it. You're more worried about the fact that the safety mechanisms actually worked and, and helped you. And I dare say it's, it'll be the same here. If you uh, were going to do a cut and you were going to do yourself some injury, better to bend the arbor on your saw, even if you have to replace that, than uh, to, to suffer the injury. Now, we're not going to play around with this blade here. I've actually got no plans to ever use this one again. Uh, I've only used it a, a, once or twice just to see what it was like. And I tell you what, the saw struggled to even get this thing up to speed. There's that much steel when you pack in the two outside blades in all the spaces. So I just wanted to show you that one. This is a, uh, a blade not to use. To probably uh, pretty good practice not to use it anyway. Um, Now the other sort of blade, and I don't even have one to show you, is a wobble blade. This is a blade that oscillates from side to side while it's running, uh, with an actual a dial-in amount of run out to cut the width uh, curve that you're actually looking for. And again, it's an unusual concept. Uh, I can't see it as being a particularly good practice in the, at the best of times. And again, it's certainly not something that you'd recommend using on, on a saw like this. But there are perfectly good examples of dado blades out there. Um, this one here is just so cheap and nasty that I'm going to sacrifice to the cause. Um, I'm sure it's not that cheap. It's probably over 100 bucks worth of uh, dado blade even so. Um, but I'm keeping my primary dado blade, which is my Amana tool dado blade, um, keeping that well and truly safe. Unless, of course, I go and put myself in harm's way, in which case uh, all bets are off. Now, before I get started, I need to change the saw over. It's currently got the brake for the 10 inch blade and I need to change it over to a dado blade brake. Now removing the existing brake is a very easy thing to do, especially when it hasn't been jammed onto a blade already. Now I've obviously already removed the insert and removed the guard. So down here there is just a, a red knob, you just turn it 90 degrees clockwise, that pull, pulls out. Now because this is a perfectly good brake I'm going to be careful taking it off.
and there we have it. The uh, that's a 10 inch blade brake, which is the, the one that we've all seen many times. Now, what I have here is the saw stop 8 inch dado cartridge. Now, that is a substantial bit of uh, break there. If I um, put it up against the other one, we're talking a lot more. Um, obviously, for a start, it's got to actually reach further because the 8 inch dado blade is um, further, to, you know, it's going to be further away from the break if you went on the 10 inch. Um, but it's also got a much larger contact area there across to uh, take into account the, the width of the blade. But again, it mounts exactly the same way. Just get myself lined up. Pushes on, and then your red retaining block goes on. And a quarter turn, lock that on. Now I'll start stacking on the spaces. One more on. Okay, and uh, it's all on. Now I'm just going to drop it down to a cutting height. Obviously the dado blade doesn't cut full depth. You don't need it to cut through the timber. What you want is to be able to cut your your, um, your dado or your, your rabbit or your, uh, or your slop or whatever you want to call it. Now for this uh, view I'm actually going to leave the insert off the saw. Now obviously that's not an ideal way of operating a saw, you'd always want to operate with a, um, an insert in place. Uh, just, but I'm leaving it off because I actually want to get that extra camera view looking down. Right, I'm almost set up and ready to go. There's just one last thing I want to do. Now, I have here my human finger analogy. I went down to the, uh, the supermarket, especially for this. And I have here a couple of nice fresh frankfurts. Now as we've talked about in the past, the saw actually puts a small charge into the blade and it detects how that, blood, that uh, charge uh, dissipates and if it's going into something um, nice, big, salty, wet, uh, like a human, uh, then it picks up on that and that's why the brake activates. And, and very simply, I'm not going to put a, um, a piece of, of me actually in the line of fire. Now, a piece of sausage on its own, or in Frankfurt on its own, is not going to activate the saw unless I'm actually holding it, because that's then making conductivity through myself and then all my mass. It's going to be detected by the safety mechanism. Now, one last thing I'm going to do before we actually go on to the, the, the actual uh, saw stop is I've got my other table saw set up here. And I've got a dado blade set up in it as well, around about the same width as what I have on the, the saw stop. This one obviously doesn't have that extra safety protection of the uh, saw stop mechanism. And so we're going to do a cut just as if I was going to do a, um, you know, just any normal dado cut. Um, with the sausage in the way, and I'll just show you just the, the sort of injury that you could actually sustain 
uh, from a data rate in a normal situation. Now, when you're standing at your saw and you're going to do a data blade cut, now, the data blade, as I said before, is not full height, so you don't have that visual clue of the um, saw actually cutting through the timber but, um, you know, that you can actually see and see where that line is drawing and, and hopefully notice if it's actually drawing a, a bead on your, uh, on your body part. Uh, you just don't have that point of reference. And if you're standing, you know, trying to guide a piece of timber through the saw, it would be very easy for you to, uh, just to make that slight mistake and having a finger or a hand extended out and not realise that it's in the line of fire until the saws are actually come out the other side. And so that's where we're going to be holding our sausage on the other side of this uh, piece of timber as I feed through the, through the saw. Now, um, you may think, ah, that just wouldn't happen, you know, as you're feeding the saw through, wouldn't you feel it touch, wouldn't you feel the pain, but um, I can tell you, I can assure you that the speed that you normally feed timber through a, a blade, and I, I went a little bit slower then than I, I probably normally would, um, but by the time you've actually registered that you've started to cut yourself, it is, I can assure you, it's absolutely too late, I mean, every single person who's ever uh, done themselves an injury on a table saw will be able to tell you the same thing. By the time you've realised that you're actually causing yourself an injury, the game's already over. Now, let me show you what you'd actually see when you went down to the emergency department and presented yourself afterward. It's um, surprising. It's not torn. It's not... Um, shredded like I'd ex I was expecting. It's a perfectly square-sided dado cut. And I have no doubt, after seeing that then, that if you did that to yourself, that's what you'd end up with. Um, it's almost more shocking in a way how perfect the cut is. Uh, uh, you know, nature doesn't build things in straight lines. And yet, you know, there's a perfectly formed uh, <laughs> cavity. Um, it would almost be worse seeing that in some ways, I imagine, than the uh, having something like you'd expect. Um, but, why God, the damage the, the, uh, that that would cause um, is phenomenal. Okay, let's put this thing aside. It's, uh, it's a bit freaky. There we go, we have our perfectly good dado cut. Now I'm going to come across now to this saw and we're going to do the same cut this time on a new finger analogy. Right, so here we are all set up to go. Now I'm actually going to drop the sausage in front in this case rather than behind just simply because I don't have that insert in place. Um, one way or the other you'll still see what happens when the dado blade just touches uh, the, the sausage and therefore through my contact um, me. So just checking everything's set up ready to go. Wow! That was pretty impressive. I'm just looking, I, I can't even see where that dado blade touched the sausage. It is in perfect condition. The, uh, <laughs> it's spectacular seeing this, the saw sort of stop drop it, um, set itself off. It really is. It always is. Um, but my goodness, that's, that's a massive reaction. 
Um, every time you see that, it just blows your mind. Last job we've got, <laughs> we've got to try and get this puppy apart. So um, let me just do that. I'm just going to bring the saw back up to full height and then just see how difficult it is to go and, going to be to actually get that uh, blade off there. I, I imagine it's not going to be easy. Um, but, you know, if that was me instead of a sausage, you know, I'd be looking at myself going, thank goodness. <laughs> but uh, as I said, my heart's still uh, racing a bit after that one. It's um, Whenever the saw stop goes off, it's quite spectacular, and, and in this case, that was almost more violent than I imagined. But, saw stop, the sausage is safe. My fingers are safe. Okay. So far, so good. The, um, the lock off. Now, it's a matter of leveraging from the back and from the front to uh, get the, the brake and the blade off together. Here we go. It is beautifully embedded. Interestingly enough, the the how tight that was on, all the chippers are actually loose. They um, they haven't sort of spun around or anything like that. So obviously, I had it up the, uh, the right amount of tightness on the um, on the arbor. Um, so they're loose. Now I've got at least one chipper there. It's um, absolutely blown a tooth off it. I can see that. And there we go.